Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Susana Palma from Spain, and I am going to show you today a case of MA with a mandible advancement of Invisalign. This is a patient of 14 years old who came to my practice with a class 2 division 1 mandibular hypoplasia and a bilateral scissor bite with a right side masticatory pattern. In the facial analysis, we see that the patient presents labial competence, some gummy posterior smile. Both midlines were deviated to the left. We can see here when we check the patient, it was a patient, a symmetric patient. The upper midline is a little bit tilted to the right side. And he presented more gummy uh, smile on his left side than on the right side. The patient was always using his right side for mastication, and so there is a canting. And in the side of mastication, the patient is going to show less gummy, gummy smile. When we analyze the x-ray, we see that the patient is in C4, so it's in a good moment for the sagittal correction of the patient. And when we analyze the intraoral view, we can see that the patient has a class, a class two, uh, division one, with increase over jet and a scissor bite. You can check that the patient was biting with the palatal cuspid of the upper premolar to the labial cuspid of the lower molar. When we started working with the mandibular advancement of Invisalign, we thought that uh, the device uh, that we were going to use, it was very similar to the twin block or to the hair appliance. But the way of working with this device is completely different. And so I'm going to show you today some of the mistakes that I was presenting in my first cases with MA that nowadays we don't, uh, we don't have anymore. And so we can uh, successfully correct the class two with this device without uh, needed uh, to make uh, some mid-course correction as we were needing before. This was the, the outcome at the, at the at the beginning of the case, we can see here the labial uh, cuspid of the lower premolar just in contact with the palatal cuspid of the upper one. And we can see the increase over jet in the case. In the x-ray, we can check the different anatomy in the condyles of the patient due to the right side masticatory pattern. And in the cephalometry, the, week, uh, the patient presented a hyperdivergent skeletal pattern with class two division one, mandibular hypoplasia, and labial tipping of upper incisor. And our treatment goal was to correct the full class two of the patient just by mandibular advancement in order to project the lower jaw. In the upper arch, as I told you before, we started just correcting the transversal uh, plane and the sagittal plane at the same time. We can correct, uh, we can make some uh, transversal correction like the scissor bite at the same time that we are advancing the mandible, but we will see later that we cannot be correcting the vertical plane at the same time uh, that the, we are correcting the class two. We will need to level the curve of SP before starting advancing the case. In the lower jaw, we were expanding in order to make this transversal compensation of the arches. And you can check that the mandible was advancing at the same time that we were leveling this curve of SPE and was making an asymmetric advancement, advancing more on the right, the masticatory side of the patient, than the left. This is the superposition of what we, uh, we were planning in the first clean check. So we can see that in the upper jaw, we were compressing a little bit the upper left premolar and expanding the lower premolars. This is the clean check that we approved. And so you can see that from the very beginning, we were starting advancing the mandible. So we can check how uh, the technician were leveling this curve of SP and we're advancing the mandible with the precision wind from the, first, uh, from the starting of the treatment. In the lateral view, we can see that in the moment that the technician plays the partition wing, they are going to remove the posterior attachment in the premolar and in the molar. So even though we see that we are having a, the, a leveling of the curb of Spain, our clean check, we are, not going, we are going to have a lack of anchorage in the posterior zone. We all know that in order to be effective, whenever we are 
trying to apply an intrusive force in the lower incisor, we are going to have a secondary effect in the posterior zone that is going to try to make the aligner to get loose. In order to have an, uh, an anchorage adequate just to make effective this intrusion, we need posterior attachment in all the posterior teeth in premolars and molar. In the moment that the technician plays the precision wings, we are not going to have this, uh, this anchorage necessary. So even though we are seeing that in our clean check we are leveling the curve of SP, this is not going to happen in the real line. This is the IPR that we plan in our case. And this is the evolution of the case after six months of be using uh, the MA. We're using some class two elastic at that time only for night use from the upper canine to the second premolar in order to, uh, uh, to help the patient just to hold the mandible uh, in an advanced position during all the night. This is the arts development when we were working six months of treatment. And this was the last time that we saw the precision wind uh, without distortions. And was the, the last time that we saw that the patient was coming with a good uh, engagement of the device. So from that moment on, the patient started biting one precision wind against the other. And this was due to the asymmetric advancement and due to, that, to the premature contact in the anterior zone in between the upper and the lower incisor. And this was the situation uh, at six months. So we decided just to remove all the attachment and we checked what things had happened from that moment, from the beginning of the treatment to that moment. So we realized that the mandibular advancement was being uh, was being uh, achieved. So in six months, we have in reduced the overjet considerably, but the curve of SP was exactly at the same level that at the beginning of the treatment. So we decided just to ask for a mid-course correction and four additional liners in order to make a pre-MA phase and to level the curve of SP before starting the mandibular advancement. Nowadays, this is what we always do. We ask for a pre-MA phase and we make all the transversal, sagittal and vertical uh, correction that we need in the upper and in the lower arch in order to avoid interference during the mandibular advancement. We have to take into account that before starting advancing, we have to upright properly the lower incisor and to have the same skeletal overjet and the dental overjet. So in order that we are able just to advance the mandible, we have to upright also the molars to prevent that in the moment that we start the MA phase and we apply the force far away from the center of resistance of the molar, we have uh, we prevent the flaring of those molars during the mandibular advancement. So this is the initial case and the evolution at the moment that we started with the MA phase in these additional aligners. As the patient was using only the right side for mastication, the mandible find it difficult in his right side just to abandon the glenoid fossa and to start with the translatory movement. So in order to prevent the distortion in between the partition wing on the right side and making and having the possibility to make this symmetric class two turn into an asymmetric class two, we decided just to combine the class two elastic at the same time that the partition wing. So you can see here that we are using a class two elastic from the lingual surface of the upper first premolar to the labial surface of the second premolar. And this is the end of the uh, set of the additional aligners. So when we arrive to this situation, we re-scan again the patient and we are going to ask for a second set of additional aligners in order just to settle the occlusion properly. And this is the final uh, photos of the patient, the final occlusion. We see that we have correct the full class two into a class one. We have both midlines are centered the upper and um, lower arch development. There's the initial overjet and the final overjet. So check that whenever we are going to uh, assist ourselves with class two elastic, using at the same time simultaneously with the partition wind, we should overcorrect the 
uh, labial crown torque of this upper incisor in order just not to run out of overjet because we are going to have this retrusion of the upper incisor. This is the initial and the final smile of the patient. This is the different in between gonion napium development in the, in the length of the mandible from 102 to 106 at the end of the treatment. And this is the evolution of the profile at the beginning, before additional aligners, and at the end of the treatment. So we have been able just to correct uh, in an effective and an efficient way the, the class two, the skeletal class two. We have correct the skeletal problem and the dental problem with only one device, with the mandibular advancement of Invisalign. This is the final and the final profile. So thank you very much.